So Bible says, when God created the heaven and the earth, everything that was needed for our success and our victory, our survival was within the earth. But because of the darkness and the formlessness and the void, we could not see anything until the spirit of the Lord. And today I pray. Even as we sang, Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew the steadfast spirit, the right spirit within me. Sometimes we might walk in spirit, but what spirit is within you? Is there a spirit of hatred? Is there a spirit of bitterness? Is there a spirit of anger? Or a spirit of love? Is there a spirit of unity? Is there a spirit of forgiveness? Is there a spirit of grace that is operating with you? But David could come before the Lord and say, renew the right spirit within, within me. Why? Because he knew that his spirit has been contaminated and that that which has, the Lord has endowed within him is obscure. Today I pray that we find grace in the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord loves you too much to let you fail. Amen. Amen. You cannot fail. It doesn't matter what pitch you find yourself. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. And I don't know what your dreams are. I don't know where you find yourself in the spectrum of life. But I've come to tell you and to assure you that God loves you too much to let you fail. He loves you too much for your enemies to rejoice over you. He loves oh, aya, aya, kata. Say for what the enemy meant for evil, what the devil and their agent meant for evil, the Lord turns it for your good. Therefore he says in the book of Romans no weapon, fashion or form against you shall stand nor prosper. Why? Because the Lord made the smith man he made the man or the woman who sit in the workshop and put their hands and fashion the weapon and say, because I made them and everything that they do are in my hands, I have asthma and weapons that their weapons cannot destroy you. And I made you. Therefore, I can confidently tell you and assure you that no weapon that will be fashioned or that is fashioned against you shall stand. He said, a thousand shall fall by your side. Ten thousand shall fall at your right hand. They will not come unto you. Only with your eyes you will see. Somebody say, with my eyes. I will see the reward of the wicked. Every wickedness assigned against you, may your eyes see their end in the mighty name of Jesus. I've come to declare unto somebody today, the Lord loves you. Maybe you find yourself in a pit and you think that God, if you love me, why? If you love me, why? If you love me, why? You are so much filled with questions. But the Lord knows your questions. And his answer to you is he loves you too much. You know, sometimes when you are buffeted, many Christians, when the Lord is perfecting our life, we think it's the devil. We say, when we are going through the fire, we think it's the devil bringing the fire to us. But say, the hottest fire comes from the Lord. He must purify us as gold and silver is purified. And they go through high degrees of fire to remove the impurities from the pure. From the pure. So you see, many a times when we face challenges and struggles in life, we tend to accuse God. And sometimes some of us even stop serving Him. We stop worshiping Him. God, how can I serve you and this happen to me? I won't follow you anymore. Amen. But, it does not matter where you are at. You say, I, I, I am with you. Even in the valley. Can you do that song in a minute? Just do. Even in the valley, you turn in it for my good. Even in the valley, you are faithful. He's faithful. You're working for us. Irrespective of the presence, he loves you too much to leave you. 
you alone. Maybe you came here thinking that the Lord has forgotten about me. In Isaiah 49, he said, How can a mother forget the baby that she has given to? Say, Yeah, they may forget. But I, the Lord, will never forget about you. I have engraved your image on my path. And it cannot be the case. How can the Lord forget about you? For your good, you can hear me. I said, The Lord is working it for your good. 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 The David that doesn't send to his brothers, Oh, you meant it for evil, but the Lord turned it for my good. What they imagine that it will be the downfall of his dream, what they imagine that it will bring him down, what they imagine that it will. don't change God. <coughs> but he changes our situation. <coughs> Somebody notes that down. Our situation don't change God, but he changes our situation. <coughs> when Joseph went through the pit, went through slavery, God was still on the throne. When he was sold into Potiphar's house, God was still on the throne. God didn't come down on his throne. He was still on his throne. But in the process of his situation, the Lord who does not change in our situation, but changes our situation, change his situation from a prisoner to deputy prime minister. God didn't change in Joseph's situation. He will not change in your situation. Amen. If he changed the situation of Joseph, he will change your situation. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. If you believe, you put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. Amen. My heart was so much filled with thanksgiving. And uh, today, that was what I was going to lead us to do. To just thank God. Mm-hmm. Then the Lord gave me a word this morning. And in my spirit, um, my God is faithful. Then the God sang a song, creating me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. And that confirmed with the word the Lord gave me this morning. And I believe I will just be obedient and just do that. The other side of my spirit also wants us to just worship God. Amen. With you. Amen. Genesis chapter number one. I think I've got about 15 minutes or 10 minutes. I should be able to do this. Genesis chapter number one. Reading from verse number one. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. 
and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. Amen. 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 This is a very simple word. Praise God. And before I go into the message, we want to celebrate everybody who is here today. Praise God. For taking the time of your busy schedule to fellowship with us. Praise God. Now let us get into today's message. Amen. Amen. It's, a, it's a word we have read several times over and over again as a believer. Sometimes if you take your Bible, that, that is the, the opening of the scripture. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And when God created the heaven and the earth, everything that we needed in this earth was within it. From the beginning. Amen. Can you see it? So what obscured the things that was within the earth God created? Can you talk to me? <coughs> Amen. Can you talk to me? Yeah. yeah. So what obscured the things that was within the earth God created? Be bold and confident. Darkness. Darkness. That is what the word of God says. Amen. Amen. Can I have that one on the screen there? So in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So everything that was needed for our survival that was needed for our living was within the earth. Just as the seed. Every fruit bearing had its seed within itself. Amen. Amen. So everything that has a, is a, in a seed form also have the power to reproduce. So the Bible says that verse number two and the earth was without form. In other words, it was shapeless. But shape was within it from creation. Amen. Amen. Are you following me? Yes. We, we should get this right. Then we can move on. Amen. Amen. So God created the heaven and the earth. Just as God has created you and me. Amen. Everything needed for our success is within us. Oh, Jesus. Everything needed for your victory is within you. But sometimes the victory we so desire or the success we so desire we might not see or it might not be visible or evident or manifested because something is obscuring that success and that victory. How many of you have achieved something that nobody came to do it for you but you did it from your within? Amen. Amen. How many of you when you were at the university somebody wrote your dissertation for you or wrote your assignment for you and stuff? Everything Maybe you struggle from the beginning, but you, you, you gave yourself time. And everything just came from the inside of you. And you began to put everything together. Are you with me? Yes. So Bible says that now the earth, not the heavens, but the earth was void. Amen. Because in heaven, there is no darkness. Because God himself is light. So he lights up the whole place. So darkness cannot inhabit in the heaven. So the word of God is telling us that now the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And this is what we want to look at today. Amen. Amen. The 
formlessness of our life. Some, I look at some of my boys, their body is God form. <laughs> but there is no form in their life. They are different. You can see the division. <laughs> Mine is not showing. <laughs> I thought, don't make up. <laughs> <laughs> you see, their body has form and shape, but sometimes there's no form, there's no order in their life. And it is not the formness of their body, but the order in their life. Amen. What is the order in your life? But you see, it is that which covers that order that makes it invincible. Mm -hmm. But the Lord loves you too much to allow darkness to reign over you. Amen. He gave his life for you to allow darkness just a common darkness. You know, you know what we do to darkness? What we do to darkness? We don't pray out. Oh, Charlie, you are amazing. <laughs> Who said you switch on the light? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You switch on the light. We don't pray for light to come. You switch on light and darkness disappears. If this room was to be, let's say, in winter now, let's say 7 p.m., this place will all be dark. We won't be able to see, maybe we might see a glimpse of it, but let's say this place is total darkness and we are all sat in here. When anybody enters from the room, would they see that their chairs are arranged here, there are speakers here, there are TV monitors here, microphone under the table, puppet here, um, keyboard there, and drums here? Would they see? They will see it. They will not see it. Why? Because the darkness and the deep, Bible said the darkness was thick, was deep. So you can't see your palm in front of you. That is how deep the darkness was. So you yourself, you can't see anything within you because you are so much filled and covered with darkness that you need light to show you out. So when this whole room is covered in total darkness, we don't pray for light. It don't enter the room and can't see itself. All you look for is the switch. If you happen to be in a country, you have electricity. <laughs> Amen. All you need is to just turn on the switch. And if assuming for the purpose of this message, this place is all thick darkness. And we are all sat here with all the settings and every instrument in place. And he enters and can't see anything yet. He can't find his way. He turns to the left and to the right and he finds a switch. When the darkness comes, will we disappear from this room? Will the chair disappear from this room? Will the systems and speakers disappear from this room? Everything will be as it is now. But when he turns on the light, we are not going to set up. You will begin to see everything will be clear. You will begin to see the pulpit. You will begin to see Martin and Gideon. You will begin to see the people in the congregation. You will begin to see everything in here. Why? Because darkness has disappeared. Light has entered and darkness has given way. So Bible says, when God created the heaven and the earth, Everything that was needed for our success and our victory, our survival was within the earth. But because of the darkness and the formlessness and the void, we could not see anything until the spirit of the Lord. And today I pray. Even as we sang, Lord, 
create in me a clean heart and renew the steadfast spirit, the right spirit within me. Sometimes we might walk in spirit, but what spirit is within you? Is there a spirit of hatred? Is there a spirit of bitterness? Is there a spirit of anger? Or a spirit of love? Is there a spirit of unity? Is there a spirit of forgiveness? Is there a spirit of grace that is operating with you? But David could come before the Lord and say, renew the right spirit within, within me. Why? Because he knew that his spirit has been contaminated and that that which has, the Lord has endowed within him is obscure. Today I pray that we find grace in the house of the Lord. We find grace in the presence of the Lord. That the Lord will renew the right spirit within us. That the Lord will expose there is light to shine in our life. Yes. That every darkness that is in our life will disappear. Yes. And that which the Lord has endowed us with will be made manifest. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Verse number 3, Bible says, And God said, Let there be light. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. light. Amen. Amen. God spoke. It's like God saying, let there be light. Is just switching on the light switch. Amen. Amen. Just standing on the light switch. And the formlessness disappeared. This afternoon, I declare unto you, Every formlessness in your life. May the light of the Elohim. Ah, Amen. May the light of the eternal Emmanuel shine brighter in your path. That no darkness will be able to hold. In the mighty name of Jesus. Darkness can be a weapon against you. Darkness can be a weapon the enemy will use to fight against you. That your glory will not be seen. That your manifest glory will not come to materialization. But the, by the power of the Lord and by the word of his mouth, Amen. let there be light and there was light. May that light that shone forth the earth, that brought order into the earth, may that light shine in your path that will bring order into your life. Amen. In Isaiah chapter number 9, verse number 2. The people that walk in darkness, have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them have the light shone. The light did not shine for those who are already in light, but only on those who are in darkness. And if you are in darkness, how thick is your darkness? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter number 4, verse number 16 and verse number 17. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. And it is my prayer that today you will see a great light. Hallelujah. You will see a great light that cannot be hidden. A great light that no darkness can withstand. And to them we sat in the region and shadow of death. Light is sprang up. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. David, it is in the same note that David said, Lord, don't cast me away from your presence. In other words, the things that you have endowed me, let them not die within me. But let your light shine through me. When the light of God shines through you, it brings forgiveness. It brings repentance. It brings salvation. Because the Bible says that he, in that time, you no longer need light. That, but the Lord himself will be our light. Psalm chapter number 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid of? In other words, no darkness, no amount of darkness can cover your glory. 
everything that you need to be successful in this life is within you. Hallelujah. But that which is obscuring that, we are going to call in the light of God. We are going to switch on the light of God in our life to make everything visible within us that our glory will not be obscure. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Say, the Lord is my light. If the Lord be my light, I can no longer sit in darkness. Amen. If the Lord be my salvation, I can no longer sit in sin. Amen. If the Lord be my light, then sin must give way. Amen. Sin must be removed. Now, the church, we call sin a mistake. But sin is sin. <laughs> Amen. And the church has graduated levels of sin. In the Bible, there is no degree of sin. Sin is sin. If you lie, you have sin. If you commit murder, you have sin. If you fornicate, you have sin. If you adultery, you have sin. Adultery is sin. So you can't say that God, me, I told a white lie. So my sin is better than the one who committed murder. In the sight of God, you face the same judgment. Amen. Amen. How deep is your darkness? They have come to encourage somebody and have come to recommend the light of God for you. If you give him the chance, he will shine bright in your life. He will take away all the darkness. You see, bitterness can lock you up in a dark room. Unforgiveness, you, you, don't, you don't invite darkness to come to you. But the person you are bitter about bring a cloud of darkness over you. The unforgiveness bring a cloud of darkness take darkness over you. But if you give them to God, he will let his light shine upon you and take away that pain. Take away that bitterness. Take away that hurt. That the glory that is upon you will be made evident. Amen. Will come to manifestation. That when men don't see any good in you, maybe now men don't see good in you, it's all because you are overshadowed with darkness. That the gold in you does not come forth. But today, the Lord loves you so much to allow you to continue in darkness. Say, son, daughter, if you only know what I've endowed you, Everything is within you, but the darkness is overshadowing the glory that I have placed in you. The psalmist declared in Psalm chapter what is man that you are mindful of him, that you crown him with glory. There is glory on your life, and darkness cannot obscure that glory. Only give the Lord a chance to cause his light to shine in your path. That the glory that the Lord has put upon your life will come to manifestation. Amen. Before I bring this message to a close, I want you, wherever you are sitting with, with your eyes open or with your head bowed, I want you to pray a prayer. We have sang a song, His banner over me is love. That Jesus loves me too much. What kind of love is this? His love is kind and his patience. That is why he has given us so much room to be alive till now. Some of us, the things that we have done, we should have been taken out long ago. But because his love is kind and he has loved us so much, he will not want to see us die in our sin. He wants to redeem us. He wants to restore us. He wants to save us. He wants to cause his light to shine in our path. That men will see the goodness of God in you. I want you to lift up a prayer. My time is up. I want you to lift up a prayer. Talk to your father. Talk to him. 
Maybe a, a part of this preaching reach down to your heart. Maybe you could identify with a certain part of the message. Not the whole part, but maybe one word in this message is ringing in your ears right now. Will you talk to God about it? 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 In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Did you receive something for today? Why don't you put your hands together for the Lord? Amen.